Hey guys, Nico Malice here. So, I'm gonna be doing a tutorial on um, covering all the stuff in the M set customizer, Sirico's M set customizer. Because I know this that some of you guys are having trouble figuring out what to do and how to work this thing. So, I'm gonna be covering that in this tutorial. I'll also try to show you guys what some of these options do. Like, I'll cover their, their functions and stuff like that and what they're for and stuff. So, yeah. So, um, what you're going to want is you're going to want to have a, the end set open of the character you want to modify. As you can see, all these little options over here on the right, these are all your effect caster options. So, some of these are triggered by pressing this plus button here, which triggers all of these down here. And then this one triggers all of these up here. So, I'll be covering most of these um, in this tutorial. So, first of all, we're going to cover the, the, the explosion effect caster. This one is the one that, that creates the effects that generate from when you attack. Um, like the light streaks, the explosions, the glows, stuff like that. All that stuff is generated through this effect caster here. Um, so you, to add this, just click the burn plus button and hit click it. And then for telling what frame you want your effect to start on, um, you can do so by using you're gonna want to have this tool, this tool here, the model viewer, and just open up the character, the character that you want to check the frame, that you want to get the frame from for the attack. So, like for example, if you want to go, you want to add like, you want to add like um, Sora's finishing leap effect to the to this attack, and you want it to happen when he swings his keyblade downward. Tell what frame that attack starts on. You go to the where it says where it says curve kick above auto step by. This this window, this little box over here. And press the up arrow until it gets to the frame that you want the effect to, the effect to trigger on. As you can see, it's, this is where Sora switches the way down to the ground. So if you like want like his um, finishing leap effect to trigger on that frame, then you would up up certain frames in this box. And then as you can see, the frame that we wanted to start in is 21. So you would put 21 as the start frame for that effect. This doesn't always work for everybody, I noticed, but it works for me off and on, depending on certain situations. So, to test the effect, you'd want to enter in, um, in the under, under value, you'd want to enter in the value of the effect that you want to start on. So, so like for example, um, 0 to through 50. Um, and just a note, guys. Um, um, the values for the for the Musa customizer um, are in decimal. So if you have like hex values that you that, and you don't know what what the decimal number is, you can go into your Windows calculator. So let me open that up real quick. You can go into your Windows calculator and then make sure you click hex and make sure it's under programmer mode. I go into this drop it. We go into this menu here and go into programmer. You go to where it's click on hex and then. Enter in the value of the hex value of the of the number you want to get the decimal value from, and it'll show it under decimal here. And then you just enter that decimal value into below the value option here. And then um, to test it, just hit the delete on the on, on your second number pad on your keyboard. It's the second delete key where your number pad is. Um, if you don't have a number pad, a second number pad, and a second delete key. I would probably recommend to get a more upgraded keyboard because you're going to need that second delete key. That's how that effect caster works. Alright, so the next one we're going to do is this one here. This one is the IOP voice one. This is the one that can that, that controls what frame you want a, a voice a voice clip to happen on. So for example, um, for example, um, if we want it to happen on like frame one, then we would put one and then hit add, and then and then we would just well, and then we would just um, mess with the value with until we get the until we get the voice sound that we want. And make sure you hit and make sure you hit the delete key, the second delete key on the keyboard to test it. But um, yeah, that's how you that's what that is. So um, yeah, and um, for this one, um, this is basically it item use option so like if you want like if, so like if you want um the character to use an, use an item on like a certain attack or a certain frame um you could choose this and whatever and whenever that, that attack or that 
whenever that attack initiates, the frame that you allow the the potion to be cat to be used on will be will happen will be used. So yeah, that's what that is. This is obviously um, ground sound effects for when Sora's foot touches the ground. Um, this is basically collisions for the for his foot touching the ground. Um, these over here. I believe these are effects that make Sora transparent in the game. I believe they get rid. I believe they make him completely transparent depending on the value that you add. This right here, this is the sound effects sound um, for like I want to say like the keyblade or whatever. You can use you can use this as option to like scroll through the different sound effects and stuff. Um, this one I'm not sure what it is because I've never messed with it. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the others. The others are, are, are kind of essential for this, so um, I'm gonna be covering those real quick. So this one, this is this one is a skip animation thing. Now I'm not too familiar with skip animations yet, so I can't really go into detail about it. But this would come in kind of use. This would come in useful if you were creating like custom allies or whatever, or if you're creating like a custom boss or whatever. Then you would probably want that. Like I said, I don't know much about them yet, so I can't really go into detail about that. This right here, this is solid state, no gravity. This is the effect caster that would uh, that, that would determine whether your character is floaty or if he comes to the ground a lot sooner, or a lot sooner in an animation, I mean. You'd want to, you want to choose that, and then if you want him to like land at like an earlier frame, then you, you could enter in like 23 for like an animation or whatever. And then, um, once he hits frame 23, then, um, he'll start falling to the ground. I think frame 23 is when the animation will end, and then the end frame will be when he lands, when he starts landing. I think that's how it works. I, I, I haven't messed with this in a while, so I don't quite remember, but I believe that's how it works. Um, if, if anybody, if I found out right about that, please let me know. But, um, yeah, that's where I think it, that's how I think it works. For this one, that allows you to to cancel a certain a certain animation and be able to combo out of it. So like for example, um, in the Remind DLC, um, you can like cancel out of any animation and do a dodge drill or, or a quick run at any point in time. This would be something that you could use that you could use to do that. And I plan on using this for most of my new sets. This one, this one is an attack label thing. Like another again I'm not too familiar with this so I can't really go into detail about it. This works in conjunction with the attack modifiers which is this one right here. Um, the attack modifiers come is, is very is essential for, for attacks for the keyblade because um, it's what allows the key it's what gives the keyblade hitboxes when you um when you when you modify the keyblade moveset. So like for example if you want to add like an effect caster for like knockup then um so I'll provide this in the link in the description, this text document here. Um, credits to ZadGX, by the way, for this for providing this text document. For like knockup. Okay, so uh, as you can see, it gave us a lot of options for slightly. Um, this one um, says single critical hit that knocks enemies slightly upwards and slightly away. What you would do is you would take the you would take the value for that. You take the value for that, which is 1 dB, you would go into your Windows calculator and you would enter 1 uh, dB and it gives you the decimal value. Then you'd enter that. First, create it, first add the frame that you want the effect caster to start on for the attack modifier you want to use. That's basically attack modifiers. So, yeah, that's attack modifiers. This one is. This one, for example, if your animation for some reason doesn't allow the character to use reaction commands, um, um, you can set a certain animation, a certain animation to use to, to trigger a reaction command. Uh, this one is move to target. This one controls um, how fast or how slow your character moves to, the, to its next target after, it, after you take out a heartless or if you take out an enemy. That comes in handy if you want to make your character rotate to a target faster than normal. This and this, I don't have any idea what these do. Um, this obviously is recoil. Um, this, this controls the recoil of the keyboard if you like, hit something hard or solid and knock it back or something or something blocks your, your attack and you get knocked back. 
so you'll get staggered. So that's that. Over here is your um, is your animation pool digits. These are what you'll be re you'll be replacing for your animations. So like for example, if you want to replace an animation. Okay, so for adding a new animation, you want to select the animation and then you want to make sure it's pointed. So um, select the animation and then hit delete on your keyboard. Then hit the then choose, click this green pencil icon here under navigate. And then re-add back that animation. I know this seems sound silly, but trust me, you want the you want the animation to be pointed. So select the select that that animation again, and then right click and delete it, and then add your new animation. And that will point it to make sure that there's no issues in game. That's how you replace animations and stuff. Um, if you if you want to replace it with an already existing animation, you can also right click and choose change this pointer. And then um, find the animation you want to replace with it, and then hit add pointer to bar slot, and then you're good there. Um, also, guys, on um, these options up here. Um, so, for example, um, if you want to take the effect the, the the effect casters from another animation. So, for example, I want to take the effect casters from from um. What's that animation? Hold on, guys. Okay. Do you want to take the the the, the, the effect caster from Sora's um, finishing move? You would select the animation, then go up and hit Save Effect Caster, and then choose the animation you want to replace the effect caster for. And select re the replace effect caster, and then um, and then it'll and then select your effect caster file, and then it'll automatically overwrite all the effect casters in both these windows. So yeah. Um, I hope that covers some of the some of the functions on the M side or some of you guys are having trouble figuring out. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can leave comments in the description of this of this video in the, description, in the comments of this video. So yeah. Um, um, also, guys, um, I I I'm getting closer to having the video out on my mod soon, so um, keep an eye out for that. Um, also, if you guys haven't already, um, you can follow my my official Twitter page for my for my for my mod. Keep up to date on on updates on updates on the mod. Um, I I po I don't post that frequently, but I post I post whenever I have an update to post. So um, you guys can follow me on my tw on the Twitter page for my pro for project reacts and um, to keep stay up to date on. Let it stay up to date on the mod, and yeah, um, I'll talk to you guys later. Stuck mouse guys, peace.